hi everyone. I did environmental design and engineering at UCL. I was part-time student, so I did the program in two years. Um, and um, yeah, the topic of my dissertation was retrofitting proposal, uh, retrofitting proposal for dwelling in London, considering unintentional health consequences and energy efficiency measures. I proposed this topic um, in, in collaboration with my supervisor, Hector, based on yeah, my previous experience at my architectural background and also the interest that I got during the program in terms of indoor environmental quality. And it was more an evolution that I started yeah, reading about retrofitting. So a lot of things that have, yeah, we have heard about retrofitting is the elephant in the room that the, yeah, everyone should be focused based on that. For example, yeah, 80% of the homes have been already built or yeah, them, the insane amount of retrofitting, yeah, 28 million homes that we need to retrofit uh, until 2050. Uh, but also one of my questions was uh, in terms of how far we should we go in terms of retrofitting. Uh, all the industry and professionals is, yeah, says that whole approach, so full amount, the whole approach, uh, retrofitting should be the most convenient. But at the same time, um, is it that affordable? Is it that possible that all the time at the same time, there are certain standards that were published in the last years. And uh, one of the important things that I also yeah, be, was aware of is the social impact of retrofitting. So there are other parameters that can be affected by retrofitting. And the one that interests me most is that um, most of the people that can be the, the consequences of retrofitting is under the umbrella of housing associations or social affordable rents. So are all these units be able to afford and to, 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 improve, uh, to implement a, a whole approach retrofitting? Um, so, and then on the other side, another you know, yeah, line of research that thought it was, um, it's already known the, the concept of, of uh, the difference between predicted uh, energy performance and also um, the, the actual real performance of the buildings. So what happened if in retrofitting we are uh, overestimating our indoor environmental quality? So which are the, the parameters that we could uh, understand um, as, as, and, and in terms of long term? Um, because all of these elements yeah, need an adaptation process that yeah, requires monitoring, post-occupational and, and developments in, in, in all the residentials. So, um, and I tested by myself first. So this is my apartment and, and I asked my tutor during my dissertation that put two loggers, one in my living room, another one in my bedroom. And having an EPC rating is a new construct, well, 2014, but it's a, a EPC rating of B. I end up like having yeah seven months a year yeah over temperatures of 23 for, yeah 23 degrees so yeah as far as I defined yeah my house definitely would be uh, overheated yeah. and and then um, so yeah I discovered then the concept or the yeah the global concept of what what could bring yeah these con retrofitting consequences or unintended consequences something that you could be positive could be negative but they are not planned. So what is, are the consequences? And uh, I keep reading, thinking that the, the three most effective energy efficiency measures uh, defining retrofitting uh, increase the risk for the most reported unintended consequences in the long term that could affect uh, occupants' health. So as everyone, yeah, the fabric first approach in retrofitting, so it would be air tightness, increase the insulation and control the, the leakage and ventilation, but it might grow the, increase the, the risk for yeah, higher concentration of indoor pollutants, risk of mold growth, and yeah, increase the temperature, the temperature of surfaces, and then overheating. So, yeah, my question uh, was, yeah, research question was into is are we offering a real improvement, a real yeah, mitigation in health parameters when we do an energy retrofitting, when we do a retrofitting focus on energy uh, or pursuing an energy efficiency? So. Just to yeah, get the, the, the answer of that, my methodology is, was quite simple. It was a yeah, description of a, of, a, of a case study, then a second stage of uh, defining, yeah, this, yeah, reading about all the retrofitting standards that were um, uh, at the moment, identifying which potential unintended consequences could happen. So from, from the implementation of these retrofitting uh, uh, measures, and then two uh, different uh, set of scenarios. 
were steps retrofitting uh, one following all the yeah model standards energy as 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 they, uh, they yeah, it is recommended and the other one it was with the priority of mitigate these health uh, unintended consequences um, uh, as we said yeah the parameters yeah that yeah I, I calculate based on on these um, scenarios where uh, energy because it's still the, the the main aim of 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 retrofitting is reduce the energy consumption but at the same time we will be um looking at uh, uh i was looking at the overheating co2 levels in terms of indoor yeah indoor quality and relative humidity after that yeah results were compared and yeah conclusions done um for the case study i i studied a collaboration with the housing association in the north of london it was a 60 units where they have apartments and bungalows and yeah uh, they are already uh, applying for um for the social housing retrofit accelerator so it needs that they need resources economical resources to do the retrofitting so um, and they need to improve it into an epc rating c which is required in the next yeah, in the next few years so um, uh, the typology selected was a bungalow which by letty guidance it was a, yeah a constrained typology which yeah a certain a minimal iterate yeah minimal modifications in the environment in their environment uh, could produce much more unintended consequences in the and and then yeah the real case of for uh, of a house uh, with four members was defined so um, i had to go through the original drawings uh, it's a it's an apartment a bungalow from the 80s so uh, yeah do all the build ups and recognize which retrofitting implement yeah and measures uh, could be possible to implement in this place in the in the in the units and at the same time going through uh, yeah the the uh, different scenarios where medium mid mid uh, minimum medium and maximum and these two groups one focus on energy and the other one in the mitigation of unintended consequences so all these decisions then become yeah numbers we had to calculate fabric performances and yeah define the family uh, the the members occupancy patterns and behavioral patterns based on openings and, and discussions with with the people living there and uh, results were uh, interesting so the energy retrofit yeah the energy retrofitting scenarios were for yeah showing uh, a gradual reduction on energy on energy consumption but um, at the same time as yeah it was assumed it was increasing the risk of having higher numbers of fluctuating numbers in for example co2 concentrations while in the yeah alternative approach focus on mitigation yeah the reductions of the energy construction were not that yeah significant but still very very uh, very good but the risk of getting higher numbers of of co2 concentrations were was uh, yeah smaller uh, we did the same for yeah uh, moving average of yeah relative humidity in terms of percentage we started from yeah a baseline already the case study in the bedrooms were already yeah quite significant this is the times that we the, the number of times that we overpass uh, the, uh, this percentage of, of relative humidity and as we can see in uh, scenarios based on energy retrofitting yeah it, it, there is a slight yeah improvement but at the same time in the alternative we tried yeah it's, it mitigates by uh, almost completely the this this um, exceedance um we um i also compare yeah with yeah overheating and the one of the another um, unintended consequences and overheating is something yes yeah, uh, my previous uh, um, presentation was was saying uh, is uh, in terms of orientation and and location and windows opening in in terms of retrofitting it's very difficult to 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 change so there are certain yeah strategies that yeah only few of them that you can apply so it was very difficult to mitigate uh, yeah the overheated in 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 the in these units and it looks much worse for the future so an extra extra measures yeah will need to be uh, will will be required for for this um and then yeah I am, my conclusions of yeah what dropped from 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 the results um was it still uh yeah if it's a maximum or ambitious certain scenario 
whole approach the scenario of retrofitting could be yeah, the, 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 the most suitable uh, solution for um, to, to, to pursue it. But at the same time, um, yeah, uh, alternative approach of retrofitting focus on or prioritizing uh, health parameters like yeah, uh, mitigation of, of um, unintended consequences it show very positive results and also uh, significant uh, energy reductions. Because actually, if we think about it, yeah, it, it would be yeah, it would be a bit controversial if we live in a house where where it's more energy efficiency than, than healthy in terms of long term. So we need to ensure that yeah, our indoor environmental quality is 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 the maximum. So yeah, and then yeah, uh, five, yeah, just a fact of that that uh, the next energy retrofitting standard will be focusing on the unintended consequences for 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 the retrofitting so that's it thank you